do the best I can with this one. 7.8 is something called improper integrals. All right, you may or may not remember that when you first learned about integration, you had to have a function that was continuous over the region. So when you had your function f of x, it had to be continuous, which meant it didn't have any holes or gaps or anything in it. And when you integrated it from a to b, you looked at it as the area under the curve, okay? And the function was continuous. But not every function is continuous. In fact, what if we wanted to look at the function say 1 over x squared. If I were to look at the graph of it, it would be something like this. And suppose I wanted to know, this is x equals to 1. Suppose I wanted to know the area under that curve. That function goes out here forever and ever and ever. Well, if I wanted to look at the area under this curve, the area goes on forever and ever and ever. Right, you would be looking at it from one to infinity as your x's get infinitely large, but it would, you would think, well, it's an infinite area, it must have an infinite value. I mean, because the area doesn't ever stop. But that's not necessarily the case. Even though the shape is infinite, it goes on forever, the area of that shape might actually approach a certain value. So if I just put a random number out here, t, and I can move t further and further out. So let's look at what happens. If I look at the interval, I'm going to look at the area of the curve from 1 to t. Of 1 over x squared dx. Is, uh, you said a minute ago that the area under the curve is actually approaching the value? It might, or it might not. Sometimes an air, uh, a curve that's infinite, the area can approach a number, but sometimes that area might approach nothing. It may just be getting bigger and bigger and bigger, which to me would be the most logical thing for it to happen, but that's not always the case. But if you wanted to evaluate this integral, one over x squared would be x to the negative one divided by negative one, evaluated from one to t, and this would be negative one over x evaluated from one to t, and that would be negative 1 over t, negative 1 over t plus 1, if I flip it around, the area <coughs> is 1 over 1 minus t. So the area under that curve can be computed with that formula. And t, if I move it further and further out, may give me a better idea of what's happening with the area of this thing. All right, suppose I look at the area of the curve from one to two. If I go from one to two, then the area when I get to two is gonna be one minus one half. <coughs> the area under that curve would be one half from here to two. Well, what if I go out further? What if I go out to four? What if I go out here to x is four, or t is four? Then the area becomes one minus one fourth, which is three fourths. All right, well, what happens if I go out here bigger? Let's go out here to 10. If I look at the area from one to 10, then that's one over one minus one tenth, which is nine tenths. Look at those numbers. I'm going from one half to three fourths to nine tenths. I'm getting bigger, aren't I? But am I getting infinitely larger? Am I ever gonna get to like 
infinity? Well, would I ever get that way? Suppose I had A was 100. I meant T is 100. Suppose I go all the way out to 100. Then the area is 1 over 1 minus 100, which would be, what, 99 over 100. I'm never going to get anywhere. I'm never going to get above 1. In fact, the, it, this limit is approaching 1. If I go further and further out here, I'm just subtracting smaller and smaller fractions. And this number out here is approaching 1. So we say that the area under this curve from 1 to t of my function is actually approaching 1. Well, what am I actually calculating here? Yes. Yes, it is. Sorry. 1 over x squared. What am I actually calculating? You said it a minute ago. As I look at these numbers and get bigger and bigger numbers, I'm actually approaching a limit. I'm looking at a limit. So what I had to do to calculate this area is look at the limit as t approached infinity of this. And we said the limit would approach 1 because these numbers are getting larger and larger and larger, which makes these fractions get closer and closer to 1. So we're saying the area might actually have a finite value. It might actually eventually get to 1. It won't. But it's getting closer and closer to 1 instead of getting larger and larger and larger. That's supposed to be a T. Yes. Ugh. Yes, details. Sorry. It is all in the details. I apologize. Well, this one won't ever get bigger than one. All right, I'll show you one in a minute, okay? But this integral is said to be improper, and it is improper because we are looking actually at the integral from one to infinity of one over x squared dx. It is an improper integral, and it has to be calculated with a limit. It has to be calculated because it's an improper integral, yes. That's one type of improper integral. There's, there are two types of improper integrals. The first type involves a, li uh, a limit of integration at infinity. So, yes. 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 This type of interval has always got to be calculated as a limit, but every limit might not it might not approach a number. It might or it might not approach a number. So before I give you the formal definition, let's look at what has this curve, one over x dx. If you were going to look at that graph from one to infinity, it's going to look very much like the x squared graph, one over x squared. And if you're looking at the area under that curve, you would think, well, the other one was 1, so this one's probably approaching 1 also. But is it? This is an improper integral because of this. It has to be calculated as a limit. You have to write this step. This is the limit as t approaches infinity of 1 to t, 1 over x dx. Anytime you see an infinity symbol, you change it to a limit. And then when you calculate this integral, this part of it is calculated just like always. 1 over x dx is a natural log. So this is the natural log of the absolute value of x evaluated from 1 to t. I don't really need my absolute value bars because I'm only looking at positive numbers. This is the limit as t approaches infinity of the natural log of t minus the natural log of 1. Now, this is going to tax your brain because you've got to go back and remember how to figure out limits from Cal 1. Limits at infinity. All right, before we evaluate the limit, what's the natural log of 1? 0. 
know if a log of one is zero. So in order to evaluate this integral, I need to know the value of this limit. As t gets larger, what is happening to this natural log function? You can look at a graph, you can try to think about what happens with the natural log function, but as the t's get larger and larger and larger, your natural log function is getting larger and larger and larger. So the value of this limit, it actually approaches infinity, which means the area under this curve actually goes to infinity. It gets larger and larger and larger. So we are going to say that this integral diverges because it went to infinity and the area under that curve gets larger and larger and larger. The integral that we calculated a minute ago from one to infinity of one over x squared dx, the value of that limit approached one, so we say that it is convergent. If it approaches a value, it is said to be convergent. If it does not approach approach a value if it goes to positive or negative infinity. It is said to be divergent or it diverges. First example was convergent because it actually approached a value. It didn't matter what the value was, it approached a value so it's convergent. It this one approached infinity so it is divergent or it diverges. Now, this is what your book calls the type 1 integral. Type 1 improper integrals, right? Exactly. This is from your book. In each of these, one of the limits or both of the limits is infinite. In this one, you have infinity out here. Your integral is going from A to infinity. This one is improper. This integral from negative infinity to B. This makes it improper, and it has to be calculated as a limit. Right. Well, it is possible that both limits are infinite. If both limits are infinite, you have got to split it into two integrals at some point between negative infinity and positive infinity. It doesn't matter where, you split it then you've got two improper integrals, one like this one and one like this one, and you have to calculate both of these. Now, with this part down here, these both have to be convergent in order for this to converge. That means these two both have to have a value for this to have a value. If one of these diverges, does not have a limit, then this whole thing diverges. Now, let me work some examples of this type of interval, besides the two that I've already worked. Do y'all have a question before I, if I kind of talked around in circles or? There is no quick way. You have to work it out. The only quick thing you can tell is whether it's improper. But there's no way until you work it out. Uh, the answer. If you get that the limit does not exist, or the limit goes to infinity, or the limit goes to negative infinity, then it's convergent. Divergent, divergent, divergent it doesn't have an answer. If you get an answer, one, 15, a gazillion, uh, whatever, then it converges. Numerical value. Then it's convergent. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's look at, oh, I don't even know where to start. Let's look at number nine. The integral from two to infinity e to the negative 5p dp. All right, this one is improper. Why is it improper? Because I have limited infinity. So that means you need to, the next step for you is to write this as a limit. 
the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from 2 to t e to the negative 5p dp. Now all of this is based on the fact that you know how to do limits and you know how to do an integral. All right, this is an e to the u. So if you did real quick, if u is negative 5p, then du is negative 5dp. dp is du over negative 5. So when you evaluate the limit, you are evaluating negative 1 fifth e to the u du. That's what you're evaluating. The value of that is negative one-fifth e to the u. This is my scratch work over here. So this integral is negative one-fifth e to the negative 5p evaluated from 2 to t. not ready to evaluate my limit yet. I've got to put these limits of integration into my problem. So this is negative one-fifth e to the negative 5t minus a negative, which makes that plus one-fifth e to the negative 10. This is a negative, this is a piece of something written on my paper. Okay, assuming we can all get to this point. Now we're calculating a limit. This is the Cal 1 thing. The limit as t approaches infinity. First of all, this number down here is not affected by this limit because there's no t in here. You only look right here. So you're looking at negative 1 fifth e to the negative 5t, and you're looking at this exponent as it gets larger and larger and larger. The exponent's getting larger. Remember a negative exponent is like having it in the bottom of a fraction. As this exponent gets larger and larger and larger, what is happening to the number in the denominator? <coughs> It's getting larger and larger and larger, but what's happening to the whole fraction? It's going to what? If the denominator's getting larger, what is this fraction approaching? It's making the fraction smaller, which means this is actually approaching zero. This is approaching zero. The denominator getting larger means the fraction's getting smaller, closer to zero, and the value of this limit is one-fifth e to the negative 10. That is the value of our integral, so does it converge or diverge? Converges. And that's the value. Let's see if I can find one with a negative infinity. Question before I move on to another one. If you get a zero answer, this conversion. Okay, let's look at number seven because it's got a limit at negative infinity. Integral from negative infinity to zero. One over three minus four x dx. All right, what makes this integral improper? This thing right here means it's improper. So you have to write a limit. As t approaches negative infinity, the integral from t to 0, 1 over 3 minus 4x dx. Now we 
evaluating the limit. The limit as t approaches infinity. Okay. 1 over 3 minus 4x. What are we going to do with our with our integral over here? What does it look like it's going to be? How about u is 3 minus 4x? So du would be negative 4dx. So dx is du over negative 4. So you're evaluating negative one-fourth the integral of one over u du. What is an integral of one over u du? Natural log. Negative one-fourth the natural log of the absolute value of u. This is my scratch work. So this is negative one-fourth, the natural log of the absolute value of three minus four x, evaluated from t to zero. <coughs> I need the limit. Oops, this should be negative infinity. I don't know why y'all are clicking instead of writing, but I'm thinking you should probably be writing. Three minus four times zero, that's gonna be the natural log of three, minus the natural log of absolute value of three minus four t. Okay. Y'all see any mistakes in there? The limit as t approaches negative infinity does not have any impact on this number right here, but we have to look down here at this number. The natural log of 3 minus 4t as these numbers down here get larger and larger and larger in a negative sort of way, you're taking the absolute value of these, what is happening? Is this approaching a number? either yes or no. It's either approaching a number or it's not approaching a number. What is the idea? Infinity. It is actually approaching negative infinity because you've got the negative sign right here. A number minus a larger and larger number is going to approach negative infinity. But this limit, because it does not approach a number, is divergent. because the limit approaches negative infinity of this entire, oops, no positive because negative and negative makes it positive, sorry. But it diverges. Question? How do you see it right there? How I see this right here? Okay, uh, the natural log of larger and larger numbers, it helps me to know what the graph looks like. If I'm ever in doubt, I'm looking at a graph, okay? The natural log graph is going something like this, much flatter, but it's kind of going off in that direction. So if I'm looking at bigger and bigger numbers out here, these numbers are getting larger and larger and larger. Yeah. And the graph may not look like that. I just know it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, then I probably should look at one or at least set up one like number 12 where you have limits of infinity at both of these, negative and positive. Y to the third minus three Y squared dy. This is improper. Why? Infinity symbols. 
and somebody's going to tell me it's improper because it diverges. No, I don't even know if it diverges yet. Okay? I just tell whether it's improper by looking at it. All right, when you see infinite at both of these, the first step is to decide where you're going to split this up. Somewhere between negative infinity and positive infinity, you get to pick a number, your favorite number, and divide this into two intervals. Zero is almost my favorite. Always, always. So I would go from, put them in order, negative infinity to zero, y to the third minus three y squared dy, plus the integral from zero to infinity, the same thing. Each of these is improper. Each of these is a limit. So the first one is the limit. As t approaches negative infinity, the integral from t to zero, y to the third minus three y squared dy, plus the second one is also a limit. t approaches positive infinity, y to the third minus three y squared dy. So step one is to split it at some point. Step two is to write these as a limit. If you don't go through these steps on your test, I will count it wrong, okay? I'm telling you right now, warning. Now, the thing about this, these both have to converge for this thing to converge. If one of these diverges, this whole thing diverges. So what you can do is pick one of these and work it. If it diverges, you are done. Okay? But if it converges, you got to work the other one and make sure it converges. Oh, well, it's best to go ahead and work one time rather than trying to keep it all added together. Work one and then just whatever your result is added to the next result. Yes. Work it. Yes. 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 That's exactly what I would do. I would take one of these, and it doesn't matter, doesn't matter which one, work it. It's fine. That's fine. Uh, do y'all like negative? Well, we'll just do this one. We'll do this one first and see if it converges. All right, for this one, this is the limit as t approaches negative infinity. When you integrate y to the third, that is y to the fourth over 4, Minus, when you integrate 3y squared, you get 3y to the third over 3, and then you have to evaluate it from t to 0. Again, I'm just working this one part. So this is the limit as t approaches negative infinity. When I put zeros in here, I believe I'm going to get 0. Minus t to the fourth over four. This is gonna be a plus, minus and minus makes that plus, t to the third. Anybody know what's happening here? As I put larger and larger numbers into these two things, what is happening to these two things? They're getting larger and larger and larger. Even though I'm subtracting them, I'm still subtracting bigger and bigger numbers. If you want to go ahead, y'all remember L'Hopital rule? You could go ahead and do L'Hopital if you want to and take and see what's happening. But this is going to approach, I believe, negative infinity because of this negative sign right here. But anyway, if it's not approaching a value, it is divergent. I believe this is approaching negative infinity. So we're actually done. Because it doesn't matter what happens here. This one's divergent, so the whole thing is divergent. Yes. That negative sign right there. Whatever, whatever you plug in, it's right, because this is to the fourth power. 
which makes these negative numbers positive, but that keeps them negative. And then that's going to be negative because to the third power is negative, so negative and negative keep getting me negatively, negatively larger, which makes them smaller, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Negative, that's right. Okay, this is type one of the improper intervals. There is another type. Remember, this one just involved limits at infinity. What if your function f of x on this graph, let's say if we were looking at it being defined only from A to B and B is not included. Suppose my function goes, let's see, here's A, here's B. Suppose my function goes like, like this. The function is defined at A, but it is not defined at B. Or, Suppose your function, I'll do this, A, B. Your function is not defined at A, but it is at B. For instance, it might have an asymptote here, and it might do something like that. And you wanted to look at the integral under here, or the integral here. These are also improper. It is also improper. Let's see if you have A and B here. It is improper if there is some point C between A and B where your function is not defined. This is also an improper integral. All right, it's defined at A and B, but it's not defined at that point C that's between them. That's an improper integral, and it has to be calculated as a limit. Now, what you have to do in this case, if you're going from A to B, f of x dx, your function is not defined at B, this point right here. This has to be converted to a limit. The limit as t approaches B from the right. Remember right and left-hand limits? All right, this is actually from the left. I thought I get my right and my left correct. Because you're over here on the left side, so you're approaching B from the left. The integral from A to T, F of X, DX. If it's not defined over here. If you're looking at the integral from A to B, of F of X, DX, and your function's not defined at A, this is a limit, the limit as T approaches A. This time you're approaching it from the right side. And you have to have the plus and the minus. You gotta tell me whether you're coming from left or right. And this is from T to B. So this has to be calculated as a limit. And last but not least, if your point of discontinuity is in between A and B, then you have to split your integral at C, the point of discontinuity. So for this integral, if you were integrating from A to B and your function f is not defined at C, you have to split it and go from A to C and then from C to B. And then both of these are limits. These are improper also. These also either converge or diverge. If these have a value, they are convergent. If they do not have a value, if they approach infinity, negative infinity, or do not exist, then it is divergent. 
of calculus. You can have improper integrals crop up in any kind of problem that we do. Now the infinity, that's easy to tell if it's improper. These you might overlook because it looks normal. The only thing is there may be a point of discontinuity. First thing you need to check are your limits of, integra your limits of integration, the 0 and the 5. Is your function defined as 0 or and 5? What happens if I put a 5 in this function? I'm dividing by 0. Can I divide by 0? Nope. Last time I checked, that was illegal. Doesn't happen. This function is not defined at 5. It has an asymptote at 5. This is improper because of that 5 right there. The denominator turns to 0. So this is improper. Improper means it's got to be calculated as a limit. So it is the limit. As t approaches 5 from the left or the right, here's 0, here's 5. We are approaching 5 from the left. Right. So 0 to t. And I'm going to write this as 5 minus x to the negative 1 third because I can integrate it quicker if do it that way in my head. If you're on the right side, you're approaching If you're on the right side, you're approaching it from the right. If you're on the left side, you're approaching it from the left. Right. Yeah. That's how you think about it. All right, this is five. Ooh, this is going to be negative. This is, all right, that's that negative sign. Let me get some parentheses in here. If this is u, oh, this is what you're doing. Uh, u is 5 minus x. du is negative dx. So dx is negative du. So you are integrating negative u to the negative 1 third du. That's what you're integrating. So when you integrate this, you get negative u to the, what do you do with your exponents? I add 1, so that would be 2 thirds, positive 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds. So when I flip it upside down, this is going to be negative 3 halves, 5 minus x to the 2 thirds, evaluated from 0 to t. It is still a limit until I calculate all this. This is negative 3 halves, 5 minus t to the 2 thirds, minus a negative makes that plus 3 halves, 5 to the 2 thirds, when I put the 0 in there. Now, I've got to evaluate the limit as t approaches 5 from the left. It does not affect this. It only affects this. Remember your first point of evaluating a limit is to try to substitute. Well, 5 is a number. If I put 5 here, 5 minus 5 is 0. So this is going to 0, which means the value of this limit is 3 halves 
5 to the 2 thirds power. And the value of this is, is it convergent or divergent? It is convergent. Converges, and this is the value of the limit, which is the value of the interval. Yes. Okay. Do I need to do another? Do I need to look at one where the point of discontinuity might be in the middle or something? Okay. calculators on this one. Zero to five. W over W minus two DW. Again, this looks normal. They didn't look like there's anything the matter with this one. There's nothing the matter with it. It's just different. But how is it different? <coughs> is it proper or is it improper? Probably improper because it's in this section, but why is it improper? <laughs> Alright, if you put two on the bottom, that will give you zero, and two is between zero and five. Now, if two were not between, if this were being integrated from three to five, it wouldn't matter. But because you're going from zero to five and two is between them, you have to take this and split it and go from zero to two. plus the integral from two to three, oh, not three, two to five. Then each of these are improper, so each of these is a limit. And they are improper because of the twos. So you have the limit as t approaches two from the left, zero to t, W over W minus 2 DW plus the limit as T approaches 2 from the right this time from T to 5 W over W minus 2 DW just like before they either if one of these diverges the whole thing diverges if this converges and this converges then the whole thing converges you got to add them together <clears throat> limit as t approaches 2 from the left. Okay, you got to integrate w over w minus 2. This is partial fractions. This is not a natural log the way it's set up. It's partial fractions. If you don't want to go through partial fractions, remember we have done calculators at this point. You can put it, it put the integral in your calculator without the limits of integration. I will take that. I think you should be able to do it by hand, but W divided by W minus 2 X. When I put this in my calculator, I get this. 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of W minus 2 plus W. And I can evaluate that from 0 to T. partial fractions, they expanded it and they integrated those two of those. Now the limit as t approaches 2 from the left, 2 times the natural log, I don't really need the absolute values because I'm looking at only positive numbers right here. Zero. 
the natural log of the absolute value of negative 2, which is going to be positive 2, plus 0. Oops, minus 0. is approaching 2 from the left. What happens if I substitute in 2's? Pardon? Well, oh, I'm sorry. The, what happens if you look at this limit? The absolute value of 2 absolute 2 times the natural log, I'll get it out in a minute, of the absolute value of t minus 2 plus t. What happens when I try to, you try to substitute in? Pardon? It would be a zero of the natural log, but what is happening to that function as you're approaching 2 from the left? As you're, as you're, as these numbers are getting in here, these numbers are getting closer, right, they're getting smaller, because you're coming to 2, so you're doing like, there's 2, you're coming this way, you're using these times, these numbers down here, you're getting closer and closer to 2, so this would be like 1 and a half, 1 and 3 fourths, 1 and nine, ten, yeah, whatever, you're getting closer and closer to two. These numbers right here, this was getting, this is, this number right here is approaching zero, isn't it? Try some numbers. Look at the natural log, when I'm in doubt, I'll start looking at graphs or I'll start looking at values. What is the natural log of, let's say, if you're over here on this side, this would be the natural log of the absolute value. That would be like negative, like absolute value of 0.5. That's a negative 0.63z, like that. If you get closer, what's the natural log of, say, 0.1? That's going to negative 2. What's happening there? What do y'all think? So you evaluate at 0.5 as you're getting closer. What's another one that's closer? 1.99. It looks like it's going to, looks to me like it's going to negative infinity. What does it look like to y'all? That's what it looks like to me, in which case, if that's going to negative infinity, then this would be divergent, but I'm declaring, I think I have done something wrong, because I don't think that's supposed to be the answer. But it looks to me like it's going to negative infinity the way we've calculated it out, which means this whole thing would be divergent. I'm going to stick with that until I see my mistake. And I think I've made one. Does anybody see what it is? I don't see what it is. Well, I'm going with divergent because that's what I see right this minute. Y'all find out real quick that sometimes I have to think about these and then I'll come back and say, oops, this is where I messed up. Pardon? Same thing. 
Because did you put the whole thing in your calculator or what did part did you just put this part in? Okay. We'll go with undefined. Either way, whether you get undefined or divergent, I mean undefined blah, blah, blah. undefined negative infinity or positive infinity, it's gonna give you um, a divergent. Okay, so if you're evaluating these limits, you can look at pictures, you can look at, you know, calculator numbers. Remember, that's the first way you looked at a limit in Cal 1, was doing a chart of values and look to see what numbers were approaching. Okay, what do I need to do now? Um, 